This is my power bank that I recently made, especially for breadboards, and I thought maybe you guys would be interested knowing how I did it so you could build your own. It uses a 18650 lithium battery that I removed from a broken laptop. I only had to buy the charger module, the boost converter, and a few other parts. I always wanted a portable power bank for my projects, so at first I bought a small one from Anchor, but quickly realized that it wasn't a great solution. First, it automatically powers off when it doesn't have a considerable load, so it's useless for low current circuits. Also, I didn't like how the battery was always hanging from the breadboard. After a few months of dealing with this, I thought of making my own. At the beginning I was going to use this small boost converter, however it turns out to be too weak, dropping the voltage easily with small loads, so I later tried this other boost converter which outputs a much stable voltage. I added a few capacitors to help minimize the ripple and noise, and also added a circuit diode to protect the external components from high voltage spikes caused by any coil on the circuit. For the charger module, I bought this one that has a battery protection IC built in to protect the battery from being damaged from things like overcharge, over discharge, and overcurrent. Although I noticed that the main IC will get pretty hot when charging the battery even after placing a heatsink. So I later realized that it was set to charge at 1 amp. The data sheet says that replacing this resistor will change the maximum charging current, therefore I put a 2.2k resistor to limit the charging current to around half an amp, which reduces the temperature to a more reasonable level. It's your choice if you want to do this, but since everything is going to be enclosed, I felt it was safer to reduce the temperature. I saw that you can use it while charging, although I noticed that some of the protections will stop working while charging, so better avoid this to prevent damaging the battery. At this point I could just put a simple LED to show when it's power on. But I wanted some sort of battery indicator, so I thought about using a dual up amp as a competitor to turn on a bicolor LED depending on the voltage of the battery. It worked, but I saw that it will blink near the threshold. So I added a small feedback to create a Schmidt trigger, and that way have a solid transition from one color to the other. Making everything compact was hard, and I wanted to build multiple power banks with all the batteries I had. So I thought that it would be a great opportunity to try one of those PCB services where you can order your own PCB. There are many of those companies, but I ended up trying JLC PCB with my own money, without any partnership or agreement. It cost me only 2 US dollars because right now they have a great promotion with free shipping for your first order. I was very impressed with the quality, so I later partnered with them to sponsor this video. This is the first time I designed a PCB, so I chose to build it on ECEDA, which was truly simple to use. I designed two versions, one for a bicolor LED with common cathode, and another version for common anode. I put the Gerber files on the description, so you can order the PCB of either version. The schematics are also on the description if you want to build it from scratch. You just have to upload the Gerber into JLC PCB website, that by the way is a sister company of ECEDA. I use the default options. Fill my information, pay, and the rest is just a matter of waiting a few days. Anyway, after testing everything, I built the main board with the pins and put everything together using quick setting epoxy. I isolate everything as much as possible to make sure it doesn't create a short circuit with the battery, which has a very thin isolation that it can be easily damaged, exposing the negative pole. I also replaced the LEDs on the charger module with a bicolor LED with common anode, although this is completely optional. Another modification I did to the charger module is to reinforce the micro USB connector to make it more durable. 
With a load of 50 milliamps, it can run over 23 hours, which I think is decent, especially considering the battery is kinda old. I built everything so I can later replace it. I also built another version with two batteries in parallel to have double capacity. I've seen that many power adapters for breadboards are designed to be placed on the end of the breadboard. But I usually put Arduino Nanos in there and I didn't want anything blocking their USB connectors. But you can build it however you want. I really like it and I use it all the time. So you should consider building your own, especially if you can get the batteries for free from a broken laptop. I wrote an article on instructables.com with a lot more details so you can check it out. Anyway, good luck with your projects and see you in the next video. Bye bye.